I would bring the footage home and I would start editing. I would upload all the footage and I'd start cutting through it. I'd cut out the things that didn't work, obviously the in between bits of the camera. I'll just get a very rough cut of some scenes, especially if we had filmed a scene that night. It was just this massive puzzle. It was just like, let's put this bit in first. You know, this massive canvas was just like, first piece, second piece, third, fourth. And of course the hardest thing with this though is because there's so many different storylines going on. You've got like maybe about four or five storylines that happen. You've got, you know, Nick being arrested by the security guard. You've got Miraface walking around, Cooper playing his game, Steph cracking it at Bonnie punching her, Joshua doing dodgy things around the cinema. Um, all these different sort of storylines happening and it was hard to figure out where people should be at any one time. So it was like, okay, if this person's in this cinema, then they can't be in that cinema because two scenes ago, that cinema was empty. At the end of The Follow, I thought to myself that the music track there is the best in that film. And at the end of Luna, the music track. And that is the best sort of composed piece of that film. And that was the hardest thing, to try to figure out what sort of music this film should have. And I tried about five or six different tunes, got sat down at the keyboard and I just couldn't get it. It was just, I was trying chunky things. I was trying like a chunk, 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 chunk. Couldn't do it, wasn't working. And so I sat down, I'll make an unspecific scene today, I'll make an action sequence piece. And so I started with the, with the basic piano thing. The dun -dun 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 -dun. And then I thought, I'll make that trumpets. I'll make it sort of like a, a trumpet, sort of like the trombone kind of. So it's like that sort of thing with the main theme. And then I did a double um, orchestral note over the top. So it was like, if I held down on an A note, I'll do the A note, an octave up. And so I did the bass line like that, and it gives it a really sort of uplifting sort of sound. And then after that, I added just a very high sort of frequency piano solo over the top. And I did the track once, and I listened to it, and I went, this is going to work for the ending, and I never changed it once. And then the ending went through three different phases. There was a whole bunch of different endings that I had in mind. But the, the, the ultimate one was to do the body bag scene. I thought that would be kind of a cool cliche. But I think, I think it would work for the film. So when I saw the final, um, the final cut in the, well, with Glenn's films, nothing's ever quite the final cut, but we, um, when we were at Hoyt's with the preview screening, the bits after the end of the, um, after all the deaths and after all the, the mayhem, comes this sort of extra bit that I'd either totally forgotten about, but I wasn't in, so I probably didn't read, no, I did. Um, but either I'd forgotten about it or it changed or something, where it's almost like a CSI type situation where, you know, the crime scene, you've got the guys in white coats and the police and they're, they're, they've shut off the cinema and they're investigating what happened. And that, that was an interesting ending. I, I think it really sort of added something to the ending. Uh, oh, it was... It was better than I expected. Not to, oh, it's to say that it sounds like I didn't expect it to be good, but I was wrapped. I mean, ho the horror genre or slasher flick or horror genre is always a hard one to to to, to nail, I guess. And um, but to sit there in a the cinema, in a, you know, a real cinema with a big screen and watch it and and just it was it just came off great. I was I was I knew what was happening, but I was scared. And even when I was going to get killed. I was hoping I wasn't. I was like, don't run, turn around. I, I knew from the very, probably from the first reading and maybe from that point that everyone in Cinemophobia was going to get along really well and the team that we had was very special. To me, you know, a project's all about generally the, the vibe between people. That means a lot. You know, and this one was good. Everyone was, um, they, they tolerated each other quite well. There was a lot of love. Yeah, it was, it was so memorable. It was so memorable. It was fun. We had uh, so many people help out, like just for the love of what they do. All the actors, the Metro Cinema Baronia is cinemaphobia to me. Like, we made a movie, but that's the place. But I loved, I loved being in the cinema, and it kind of started to feel like home. And um, 
yeah, I, I was really sad when it wrapped, or when my last scene in the cinema was wrapped. Because, yeah, it just felt like the end of an era. Because filming took so long that, yeah, it felt like, not only because of the physical location, but the fact that that group of people weren't going to meet in that location on a Sunday and Monday night and we weren't making a film anymore. It was really devastating. For the most part, low budget films, they're a miracle just to get made, finished. Uh, so yeah, when one's finished, then, um, you know, hats off to the people who did it. I wish we could do it again. <laughs> I wish, I, I need to work. This is cool, I, I, oh, it was so fun. I miss it, I miss it bad. That's why I'm hanging for the premiere. So we can all get back together and just watch the film and go out and get drunk and do whatever. We can play Cinemaphobia, say in the next two months, play it for a week, then it stops, and then say after a, like another five months, we've got a blank in the in the programming. We just chuck it back in again, and start playing it. So it, it can it can just it can just run forever basically.